My name is Ishola Great and I'm the current head boy of Strong Tower Academy. Welcome to Chapel of Change Ministries. I hope you enjoy the message as you watch it. Thank you very much. See you next time. Of tongues, it is not enough to thank you for your goodness upon our lives. Lord, we give you praise in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray that as we go into your word this morning, that our minds will be enlightened. And your word will burn on our hearts. And your word will transform our lives. Lord, we give you praise. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's be seated in God's presence. Be seated in God's presence. So we are continuing this morning. Um... The Macedonian call and 2024. You know, yesterday when I was sharing, it got to a point where I started telling us that this year we must listen to the instructions that the Holy Spirit gives us. You must follow the leading of the Spirit this year. If you don't want to, if you don't want to <laughs> regret. You must follow the leading of the Spirit. And we read from the book of Acts of the Apostle, chapter 16, how that Paul and Silas, Timothy and the rest of them, they were on a journey. And um, as they were preaching the gospel, God sorted the issue of accommodation. God sorted feeding and all. But as they were doing God's work, they encountered some challenges on the way. Remember the girl who had the spirit of divination, who brought profit to our masters. Please, can we have decorum, please? Yes. And this girl followed them for days and she kept on saying, these are the men of God. They have brought good tidings to us. And what she said was right, but the spirit behind her was wrong. She brought fortune to her masters. But the spirit behind the fortune was the spirit of the devil. So the devil can actually give somebody a fortune or he can give you a lot of money or wealth. But what it will collect from you without wealth, your generation may not be able to pay back. I guess what I'm saying. So some of you that will be enticed that you should Join a cult and sell your soul to the devil. Don't try it. Because that money will finish here on earth. You can't take it to where you're going to. So don't do anything to make wealth. Are you getting what I'm saying? Because I know people around your age are already committing fraud. Please don't try it. You see a boy of 17 year old driving a 2023 model car. Yes. People that have been working for 30 years have not even bought such car. And girls, don't let your eyes enter All these big things, cars, houses, money. Don't let your eyes enter. Are you getting what I'm saying? Don't be a long throat girl. They call them Olosho. Don't be a long throat girl. Runs girl. Don't be a runs girl. So, as they casted the demon out of the girl, they ran into trouble because the masters of the girl decided to bring them down. They beat them up. They injured them. 
and they handed them over to the magistrates. The magistrates are lawyers. They lied to the lawyers and Paul and Silas were jailed. They locked them in the innermost part of the prison where there was no light. Rats and roaches would have tabernacle place and that was where they kept them. But instead of them whining and murmuring and complaining and crying, these people decided to shift focus off negativities. One of the things that you need to learn as children of God is to shift your mind from things that look bad. Somebody insulted you and you are crying. What's the meaning of that? Are you a crybaby? Because you feel the subject, you are now contemplating suicide. What's the problem with you? Are you getting what I'm saying? Because you have not eaten for two days. Eh? You now want to go and rob or commit crime. No. These men changed their disposition from what they were going through to where they were going to. If you focus on what you are going through, you'll be stagnated. You remain stagnant in life. The best that you can do for yourself is to think about where you are going to, not what you are going through. Please write it down. Don't be carried away with what you are going through. Think about where you are going to. When life beats you, Black and blue. Life gives you blow. The way they gave them blow. They busted their mouths. They slapped them. They spat on them. They humiliated them. They did not focus on those things. They didn't focus on what they were going through. They focused on where they were going through. Because they were on a journey. This life is a journey. Their journey was still far. Because they were still going to Macedonia. And they were in Philippa. Are you getting what I'm saying? They were on their way to Macedonia. And now they are stuck in Philippa. And it looked like there's a problem. But they did not focus on the problem. They only focused on where they were going to. That's one of the ways to succeed in life. Your journey is very far. Some of you are in SS3. Listen, you have not started life. Don't let anybody bring you down because you are, you are on a journey. You are on a journey. This school is a journey. This is not the end of your life. So don't be carried away with everything you are seeing here. What we are doing is that we are building you for the future that is this is not the end. So when somebody insults you or somebody treats you anyhow, that is not the end. You are going somewhere. Learn from that scenario and move on. Are you getting what I'm saying? You don't die there. You don't stay there like that lady that committed suicide during the week. She terminated her life because of what she was going through. The best you can do for yourself is to take your mind off what you are going through and focus on where you are going to. And the best way to shift focus from what you are going through is praises. Please write it down. Praise and worship. Praise and worship. You increase the volume of your radio set and you begin to dance. They didn't have access to radio. There was no radio then. They composed song. There was no keyboard. There was no drum set. 
no lead guitar, no bass guitar, no conga, no musical instruments. And they worship God. And everybody that was locked in that same prison, even those in the best part of the prison, had them singing. Paul and Silas, they sang, they prayed, and the Holy Ghost came down. Paul and Silas, eh? they sang, come on, eh? and Holy after they've been beaten, handcuff was in their hands. Then they weren't using handcuff. Then they were chained. Imagine somebody who is chained on his hands and in his legs, and is in the innermost part of the prison, praising God. Praise the Lord, O single. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise His holy name. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. They were praising the Lord. They praised the Lord that people could not sleep in the prison. Who they be? Who be these people? Who are they? Even the jailer was like, man, what kind of men are these men beating? by life and people, instead of them to be feeling rejected and dejected, they were still, they are, they are, who are they praising? I want to know that person that they are praising. Ah, oh boy, people don't live for this earth. Oh. So, they started Praising God. Verse 25. Acts 16, 25. But about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns of praise to God and the prisoners were listening to them. The best time to praise God is when you are in distress. When you are in pain and agony. When somebody just betrayed you. When somebody just insulted you. When it looks as if things are not working in your life. That's the best time. Not when you just bought a new car. You just built a new house. You just take your result and it's A1 parallel. It's good, it's good, it's good. But the best time is when you are going through a lot. Verse 26, everybody gaze into your Bible. Verse 26. And suddenly, somebody say suddenly. Say suddenly. Say suddenly. Say suddenly. You know, in our contemporary Nigerian English, we say sharp, sharp. Everybody say sharp, sharp. As they were praising God, sharp, sharp, something happened. There came a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison house were shaken and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were unfastened. The chains broke off. There was a shaking. There was an earthquake. And the gates, look at the kind of gates they would have. I've been to, I've been to stations before where they keep criminals. I'm not talking about all those local stations or local. I remember there was a time that during our induction, they took us to Ikoi prison. Before on the streets of the prison, you already know that there's, a, there's maximum security in this place. On approaching the prison, you will see so many bulletproof stuff outside. If you see the gigantic gates, ah, they never burned that if we will go escape. There are CCTV cameras everywhere. There are snipers. 
Yes, now, uh uh-uh, uh, gone. Every sniper, everywhere. You go do anyhow, you you do what you will take what the water. You ah, maximum prison. When you enter that prison, you will humble yourself. I mean, that prison is even not so sophisticated, though. I'm just giving you an example. You now see people in different categories of prison. I think one day we should go out on excursion to prison. How many of you would like to go on a... Okay, good. I like that. Maybe, I, maybe I'll discuss with school authority. You guys should go to prison and go and see what's happening in prison. Yeah. Do you know the reason you need to go to prison? So that your brain will reset. Before you steal 15 error. 15 error is calling you, come, steal me, steal me, steal me, come in, come in, come in, steal me. When you remember prison, you will say, I'm, I'm not steal. Because some people are in prison because of 15 error. Some people did not even steal. Some people, they lied. And they are in prison. Some people are just walking on the street. They wore dirty jeans. Like that jean that fell on me wore. And police is raiding people and they saw the person and caught the person. Nobody to, to bail the person and the person is in prison. Some people are in prison because they had an argument with somebody and they pushed the person and the person fell down and died. And the person is in life imprisonment. So when you go to prison and you see the crimes that made people come to prison, your head go correct. You don't just, you don't fight. You see fight, you jackpot. You see another person's money, you run away. Are you getting what I'm saying? When you go to police station, you will see crimes that brought people. They write, Mr. Abdul Naif, something, something, stealing. That's why he's in prison. Mr. They brought him on Monday, so, so, so time. By so, so, so time. He stole wee barrow. Yes, there was a time that I went to a prison in my area. Somebody was locked up. He stole a bike. So we went there to settle the matter and all. So police people were talking. They said, this guy, they have arrested him more than four times. He was stealing wee barrow. So police were even laughing. Police will be there like they'll be laughing. Ah, oh, dear. Different things take people to prison. So it's good you go to prison and see, you understand, so that you can have sense. You get. But these people did not commit any crime. They lied against them. And they found themselves in prison. And while they were in prison, do you know how many people have found Christ in prison? I've had testimonies of people that committed one crime, they were in prison, and some people went to prison to preach to them. And they gave their life to Christ. There's a guy now, his name is um, Testimony Jagger. 2014, 2015, he did something, they locked him in prison. So, a particular church went to preach in that prison, and they led him to Christ. Are you getting what I'm saying? He got born again, and they prayed for him that God will help him. And in less than one year, in less than one year, they released him from prison. And he went to locate the people that came to preach. And he became born again. So, so many people meet Christ in prison. While so many people become more ardent in prison. Prison where you cannot lie down. You can't sleep. You are standing like this. Because 50 people are in, like, that my room. Guys, that my room. 50 people in that small room. How would they... How would they cope? How would they survive? They are gasping for air. Their hands are up like this. In that same prison, there will be people that are chama. Once you enter the prison, they say, Ah, Oga, Oti Muyoko, wow. They don't bring somebody. Who will be the person? As the person goes, Ah, Oga, good. He say, Ah, you did. Oga, leader. Inside prison, they will still beat you. Some people have become presidents of self. They will tell you that, let me tell you what happened in prisons. I don't know why I'm going this way, but let me tell you. As you are living, as you are in that prison, you will be paying per night. You will pay for accommodation, yes. 
Uh-uh. You will pay. Your people will pay. Your family members. They will be paying. Every, they will pay. All the people in the prison will ask you, ah, oh, Benny, what do you do? If you say, hey, they lie, say, now nah, 5,000, but now nah, 2,000, they, they will slap. You go there, you go to steal 2,000. You know, it's in Academy, come here. Two million, I am still low. Say, you know, you won't see anything. Say, come on, kick, come, go down. Are you getting what I'm saying? Don't go to prison. Don't commit crime. But if you are preaching the gospel and something happens, and you find yourself in prison, it's a means to an end. Praise God. Are you get what I'm saying? Praise God in that prison. There was a great earthquake. God wanted to do something. When the jailer saw that there was an earthquake and, and he wanted to kill himself, they told him, they said, sir, no, 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 don't kill yourself. We can't run out. <laughs> well, and immediately the man said, please, I want, to, I want to surrender my life to Christ. I want to give my life to Christ. I want to give my life to Christ. He gave his life to Christ. He said, not only me. Me and my family. Let's read it. And suddenly there came a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison house were shaken and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailer awoke and saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself. Supposing that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul cried out with a loud voice saying, Do not arm yourself, for we are all here. And he called for lights. There was no light. That place was dark. Maybe it was um, PHCN that was in charge. And he called for light and rushed in and trembling with fear, he fell down before Paul and Silas. And after he brought them out, he said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? The same question that Nicodemus asked Jesus. He said, Sir, what must I do to be saved? What looked if was turned around for good? Because if they had not been locked in prison, the jailer wouldn't have been saved. Are you getting what I'm saying? The way God sees things is different from the way we see things. Though. That's why we must pray that God will anoint our eyes with eye salves so that we can see the way God sees. Let's continue. Why verse what? Verse 30. And after he brought them out, he said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They said, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. You and your household. And they spoke the word of the Lord to him together with all who were in his house. That means from that prison, he took them to his house. And they preached to him. He got born again. And every member of his family, his workers, everybody gave their lives to Christ. And there was joy in heaven. Because if one soul turns to Jesus, there is what in heaven? There is joy in heaven. If one million enter my account, as I'm speaking now, there is no joy in heaven. I guess what I'm saying. But if one soul is turned to Christ, there's joy in heaven. God values souls more than material things. I 
And he took them that very hour of the night and washed their wounds. And immediately he was baptized, he and all his household. And he brought them into his house and set food before them and rejoiced greatly, having believed in God with his whole household. This man didn't just go born again. His wife, his children, his workers made other people that are working with him, every one of them got saved. You saw the trouble they went through, how it led to the salvation of the jailer and his household. The first preaching they preached to the man was praying and praises. Are you getting what I'm saying? Prayer and praises was what first ministered to the man. So if you see Pastor Sam at the garage where people are smoking, people are drinking, and you are there, you are dancing, you are worshiping God. What you are doing first, you are preaching to them. If something happens, they'll come and meet you and say, please, what must I do to be saved? Are you getting what I'm saying? The jailer, his wife, children, everyone in his household got saved. What is the point if you are the only one saved in your family? It doesn't make sense. Every member of your family must serve God. I and my household shall serve the Lord. You get what I'm saying? So part of serving God is praise and worship. Now let me read from my script before I begin to read other scriptures to us. What is I want you to write this down. The purpose of praise and worship. The purpose of praise and worship as it relates to singing Dancing and praying is to create. Let me go back again. The purpose of praise and worship relates to singing, dancing, and praying is to create an intimate space between you and the Lord. Allowing him to speak directly to your heart in such a way that you are drawn nearer to him. The purpose of praise and worship as it relates to singing, dancing, and praying is to create an intimate space between you and the Lord. Allowing him to speak directly to your heart in such a way you are drawn nearer to him. So, singing, praising, praying is to draw us closer to who? To God. Now, let me branch. Who are you always singing to? Who are you always singing to? If you sing the song, worldly people are singing. What you are doing is that you are getting closer to the person who gave them inspiration. And it is that spirit you draw to yourself. Look at them. They praised God. They prayed. And an angel came to open the prison door. Anytime you are singing, please write this down. Anytime you open your mouth and you sing, you are attracting spirits to yourself.
If you sing, I wanna bless my life. You want to carry your love away. If you sing it, the spirit of the song is what you are attracting to yourself. Because singing is like a magnet that attracts. So if you are singing a lustful song, you are attracting lust into your life. If you are singing a song that promotes drugs, alcohol, sexual promiscuity, what you're doing is that you are attracting the spirits into your life. I hope you guys are getting what I'm saying. I hope I'm not talking to myself. See, because a lot of people tell me, eh, Pastor Sam, what is wrong? Eh, I just like the song, I like the beats. Oh boy, it's beyond the beat. Oh. There's a spirit behind every song. There's a spirit. There was a concert that was held in London. People died. It was a Nigerian artist that went to sing there. People died. They are still investigating the matter. In that kind of concert, where they are exalting the name of the devil, the job of the devil is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So if you go to his concert, you can die. So people died. When Michael Jackson was alive, when he's singing, they'll be carrying dead bodies out of the place. Are you getting what I'm saying? They'll be carrying dead bodies out of the place. Because there's a spirit behind what they are doing. And that spirit is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. It's not just dancing. It's not just enjoying the song. I told them at the Sunday school this morning, some of you are comfortable drinking poison. Poisons from songs. You are drinking poisonous songs. The song you are singing will put something in your life. That's why some of you cannot control yourself. You have listened to that song, Taya. That you are just looking for boys that will touch you. You are looking for a boy to touch you. Some of you have listened to some songs that are, ah, you now have appetite for colors. You know, there's one that's written on colors. On, on Colos. Colos is Colorado. Act drug. So as you are singing, on Colos, on Colos, on Colos, on Colos, your appetite starts tending towards looking for Colorado to scatter your brain. Another place that we need to visit, please remind me. One is prison, Abby. Second one, psychiatric hospital. Yes. Uh-uh. You see, uh, uh. have we not tried? We have tried now. We have visited big, big places. You understand? Let's go and visit the real places. If you visit psychiatric hospital, we will ask the doctors there. We will ask them questions. Why are these people here? Then they will tell you why they are in that place. They will tell you how people are smoking shit. How people are smoking shisha. How people are... Do you know that in Syria alone now, they are smoking human bones. They'll go to a burial ground, remove the flesh, now grind the bone to powder. That's what they are smoking in Syria alone. Is that not the devil's work? Answer me now. Is it not the devil's work? And psychiatric hospitals, the staff said they have too much cases. That they cannot undo. The same thing. This Yaba in Lagos here too. They have too much, too many people. If you are walking on the streets, you will see plenty of mad people. They listen to one song that encouraged drugs. They went into drugs. Their friends influenced them. Now they are mad. You will not be mad in Jesus' name. So when you sing... The song you sing attract the spirit of that song to you. That 
That's why you must divorce yourself from every rubbish songs that you have been listening to. Your tongue was made by God. And the only person that deserves your praise, your songs, your dance is God. Is the one that created you. And you and I were created for his pleasure. So if I do anything that doesn't give God pleasure, that means I'm not fulfilling purpose. Some of you see, but I like the beat of the song now. But the song is just, the song is not talking about girls. It's not talking about drugs. Who inspired the song? Who is the person? Because these days they bring those rubbish songs to church. They now say they repackage it. They remix it. Can't Holy Spirit give you a fresh song? Now carry worldly song and bring it to change, change some words. You say it's a gospel. Say it's a go- which gospel song? Friendship with the world is enmity with God. That's what James said. You are romancing the world. You don't know that you are, you are planning your deaths with the devil. Which one is raining again? Let down below. Which one? Eh? You, you don't know. Eh? Okay, I said it yesterday now. Eh? DND. You won't need DND. GNG. DND. Do not disturb. This. Elon Musk boy too is raining. Right? It has sharp. I'm not, we are not current. Which one? DNG. DND. Okay. Which one? Apart from now, which one is raining? Eh? Twe, twe, twe. Which one is twe, twe? I've not had that one. Eh? Eh? Which one? Okay, cast. Are you from America? Oh, good. Cast. If you just not hear American English, where is um? What's his name? Joshua. Elijah. Where is Elijah? He hasn't come. Okay, he's coming tomorrow. Okay, you have somebody from the U.S. too. Say he didn't say cast. Now, now, now English war war. People are speaking war war English in this country. Say cast, cast. You hear American English? Say cast. Cast. <laughs> now they hear American English. Cast. Nigerians want to say fire. Say, fire. America say fire. It's fire. Let's continue. So who are you singing to? The song you sing, who does it a divide? Who does it glorify? Always ask yourself that question. This song they are playing now, who does this song glorify? Are you getting what I'm saying? Because whosoever the song glorifies will release a spirit to you. When they praise God, God released an angel to rescue them from their problems. When you sing worldly song, the devil will release demons that will come and destroy you. That's why you have dreams and somebody is having sex with you in your dream. It's from one of the rubbish songs that you have watched. You see somebody with five heads chasing you with matches. Some of you watch horror movies. Ah, nage mind do. Ah, these children in a game mind. You sit down two hours. You are watching horror movie. Dracula. <laughs> Vampire. Sucking blood. In a game mind though. I cannot watch it. You can watch it. Eh? Akapalupo. In a game mind. Ah. 
do they need? Do people have money? They are not scary. Oh, other ones are more scary. Zombie 3D. Huh. I don't want to watch it. Jokey. I know. Listen, you are watching horror movies. And you don't want to have bad dreams. You don't want demons chasing you in your dreams. You run. Pastor Sam, please come and pray for me. Oh. What are you exposing your mind to? Now let's come back to this. As we begin to close. The book of Luke 6 45 says, For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. It is what is in your heart that you sing out. If sin is in your heart, what you'll be singing about is sin. sin. If the love of Christ is what is in your heart, that is what you will sing. Are you getting what I'm saying? Please. If you don't want to destroy yourself, little children, stay away from idol. Praise the God that made you. Sing to the God that made you. Dance to the God that made you. Serve the God that made you. Because if you do that, prison doors will be opened. Can I hear amen? When you do that, shackles will be broken off your feet and your hands. And these shackles are addictions. They are curses. They are limitations. As you praise God, those things get on fasting. Let's buy it and pray. Let's buy it and pray, everybody. I want you to pray for yourself. All around me, he won him as in TTIO. Amio. The only person that is worthy of your praise, your singing, your dancing is God. I want you to pray that God, please. You know that this is my struggle. Anytime I hear all these bad, bad songs like this, ah, I can't just control myself. I can't control myself. I'll just be singing it. I'll be that, Lord, I don't want you anymore. I want to begin to hate everything that you hate. I want to abhor everything that you dislike. If you don't like it, I won't like it. If you don't love it, I don't love it. I want to praise you. Only you will I praise. With my lips. With the fruit of my lips. I will sing to God. With my dance steps. I will be body for the Lord. Because whosoever I praise is the one that will disperse spirits to me. Are you praying this morning? We all struggle with these things. When I was your age too, I struggled. What song to listen to and what song not to listen to. And I get tempted several listening to bad songs. Imbibing bad things from there. Not knowing that I was worshipping the devil. It was when I got born again that God opened my understanding to see that the only person that deserves my singing, my songs, my dancing is Jesus Christ. I want you to pray this morning. Say, Lord, please help me. Lord, help me. You are the one I want to praise. You are the one I want to praise. 
I don't want to open my mouth. I'll be singing a dirty song. Even in tough times, I receive the strength to pray, to sing, to dance, even in the deepest prisons of life. Even in the darkest places of life. I will exalt you. I will praise your name. I will praise your name. Because praising you attracts uncountable numbers of benefits. I will praise you. I will praise you. I will praise you. I was made to worship you. I was made to praise you. I was made to give you pleasure. And when my praises go up, your blessings come down. Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you, Lord, this morning. We thank you for great things you've done for us. Lord, we pray that you lay your hands upon us and break every shackle of addictions, of habits, of sins, of our lives. In the name of Jesus. We will not sing to you in vain. We cannot dance to you in vain. Touch us and transform our lives. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's give the Lord a round of applause. Hi everyone, my name is Ali Miguel Msala. I'm student coordinator of Chapel of Change Ministries. I hope you all enjoyed the service and I hope you were blessed. Please like and subscribe to our channel and press the notification bell to receive updates on our videos. Thank you. Bye for now. Bye for now.